Welcome back, everyone. Now, we all know Shirley is an expert in the art of gardening, but today she is going to show us how to turn a garden into a work of art. Look yes. at this here, Shirley. It's so beautiful. It's a lot of fun. So for people who don't know at home, what exactly is a tapestry ground cover? Okay. A tapestry ground cover design is an alternative to what we typically see in our yards. I want to show you what an imp uh, what this is. This is a tapestry design. This is a hillside I designed that used to have like Vinca, one ground cover throughout the whole thing. Okay. But now it looks like an impressionistic painting. It's got dots of gray. It's got some silver. It's got chartreuse, pink, and they're all low growing plants that cover the ground the same, but make a much more beautiful statement. And usually That's we really just, beautiful. we don't do that. There's another picture of my neighbor's house. I'm going to take care of that for them. They've got ivy and that does give you wall to wall coverage, but it's not very inspired. It's not as interesting. Right. So if you're going to do, I've seen this many times. I just yes. didn't know it had a name to it. Right. So if we're going to do this, you have to have the right color combination. And yes. even though in the, like in the first picture we yeah, saw, that's right. there were still different colors Let's there. Let's take a look. The first thing you want to consider is your house color. Okay. We have a gray house. So this is our main foundation plant. As you can see, this pittosporum has silver on one side. Isn't that pretty? And yeah. look at the other side. It is a nice olive green. So you want to pick around three colors. One of them, if it, if it works, the house color. Then we have here maroons so with pinks. Again, the silver with the house, and then the high contrast chartreuse. So very simple, but what you want to keep in mind is that look at the subtle differences in the texture. You've got, like I, like I said, the two-tone. Two you've got here the carnation. You've got a painted face. Here, you've got a solid uh, succulent that right. you can actually dot and create lines and paint with them, right. you know, like separate exactly. an area. And then you've got this very soft spilling color. So texture is important, color is important. And placement's important. Placement's so important. So we are going to start uh, planting. And yes. how do you actually decide which plants work well okay. together, though? Well, here's the thing. You've got to choose plants that all need the same type of soil, okay. same type of sunlight, and same watering needs, or else it's not going to work. Okay? okay. And so all of these have the same. Correct. And then what you want to do is you want to start with your taller plants in the, in the back. Do you want to do this? Sure, I'd love okay. to. So one of the things, okay. I'll take that actually. Right. Go ahead and make a hole for that. Okay. One of the things for Debbie to so consider back, back. that you want right it 12 here. inches apart from the last hookera. Okay. This is a hookera. The reason I know that is I read the label. And if you're going to make one of these, read the label. And what's important is how how wide it grows. If it says it grows 12 inches wide, that means, and you want them to be eventually shoulder to shoulder, 12 inches away. Any closer, they're gonna crowd or, each other. Or six inches away, yes, because that's on center and it'll grow on both sides, okay. exactly. And then you do that, and then look at this. Now that's the taller growing. Now this is our mother of time. Go ahead and plant this. Right it's a ground cover. It? Yes, and the reason you can do that is that this is going to be not a big spreader, but it's got beautiful texture and it's only gonna grow three inches high, okay. so you're gonna see it. And then look at the so It's plant. almost like you're doing steps. It's yeah, exactly. Like, it's almost like a stadium seating. Ex exactly. <laughs> you got to make sure you're a good neighbor. And then it's okay to put a succulent in front of this because the succulent is going to stay put, right? right. It's not going to grow really big, and you're always going to be able to see the time behind it. But I feel like the succulents you've just sort of put all over the place. Yeah. Have it well, here's what I did. If you want to follow me here, I put a ribbon of succulents to create a wave, a river, and then I underscored it by using some stone that's the same exact color. And that's something you guys can do too as a design foil. If you want to underscore something, go ahead and emphasize it with a stone that's the same color. You could even use mulch if this were like a brownish color uh, plant so to do it. Now here's the important one, the creeping jenny. The reason we're putting this in the front is because a creeping plant like this what will happen is this will continue growing every year longer and longer. Oh Whereas, you know, our succulent has a finite growth. Yeah. It's going to, you know, be mature and that's it. So what happens is if we put this creeping jenny behind here, let me tell you, it's going to smother everything. Oh, no. And so know your plants, know how big and tall they are, know how wide they get, uh. how they grow. And it's not that hard, guys. Just read the label. So does a creeping jenny kind of grow like a bougainvillea? Yeah. yeah. Just it's going to cascade. Just goes and what's beautiful. interesting about this plant, too, is if you notice, and this is not the only ground cover that's this way, if it's touching the ground and it's facing the direction we don't want it to go, like into the succulent, what's going to happen is this is going to put down some roots 
Oh. And then it's going to be really hard oh, to take it out. So you, it's like combing uh, Alexandra's hair, like, honey, let me get that hair right. out of your face. That's what you do with this. And then you just keep it nicely watered. And all of these plants need the same amount of water. Same amount of water. And you know what's really nice? If you select perennial plants like we did here, these are going to come back year after year. Oh, it's not like those pretty petunias, which are gorgeous, that you could do a whole bunch of them, but you take them out at the end and of the season. Fun. This stuff is going to grow, and it's going to stay here for years, and you're going to become a master artist in your garden.